What's up, StarCraft fans? Today we're doing the tier list for Together Forever, just Larity on Chain of Ascension. So, Brian, let's hear about the map. Chain of Ascension is the map where we have to support Jinara in her fight against Taemon's champion. To support Jinara, each player needs to stand a unit near Jinara to push her along the track to the southeast corner. If we push the fight all the way to the southeast corner, we win. But if Amon's forces support their champion and push them all the way to our corner, we lose. Half of each attack wave, enemy base, and map objective is immune to either you, the other half is immune to your ally. All enemies revive upon death. Enemies immune to you initially will become immune to your ally on the second life and vice versa. Yeah, so basically, it's a double solo. You and your ally have to solo. And while you finish soloing your half, you have to wait for your ally to solo his half, and then you switch. Um, you, you solo his half now, and then he solos your half. On every single wave, on every single base, on every single hybrid. So uh, actually, with me are Terribleness and Sticksbender, so uh, Tutu's not available at the moment. Well, actually, he is available, it's just that his sound isn't working. Terribleness and Sticksbender, how are you guys today? Hey, going good? Hi, very good. I'm actually available. And my He's actually available. <laughs> That's amazing. This is, this is somehow happening. This is somehow happening. I didn't expect it to be the case, but somehow it is. So, uh, Sticksbender, how are we going to rate the commanders today? Well, our big concern is polarity. So, what's helpful for that is commanders with good tanking to help allow you to just shrug off the fire from units that your ally is supposed to be killing, but they're out of position for that. And yep. crowd control is going to be very helpful since you can crowd control enemies who are not your polarity. It just won't do any damage to them. How so, important is it to have a good early game? Uh, it is quite important to have a good early game, not because of the mutators, but because of the map. Anything else to add, uh, Terribleness? Yeah, it's, uh, it's all about either controlling Amon's army or being able to tank so that your, your ally can actually do things. So let's begin. Abathur, where do we put him? I'd say B tier or so. It's the problem with Abathur on this one, because he's actually amazing at tanking the waves and doing everything else, is getting started. Because you can't lure when you have both just die and polarity on. Any prestige on this uh, terribleness, or will any prestige work? Um, I wouldn't recommend P3, because that's just going to take your slow start and make it even slower. Yeah, uh, otherwise, otherwise, P2 and P1 can both do okay. P2 or P0 are probably recommended, because your ultimate evolutions can do a lot of work on this one that can tank for a very long time. Okay, sticks better. How about you? I agree with the reasoning. I just feel like the re the how bad that is is understated. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, we don't like, really have a good feel for the rest of the commanders are yet, so I'm 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 torn between B and C, but I'm okay with them either way. I'd say we should start with C for now because I have a reasonably high degree of confidence he is going to not fit into B. Are you okay with this yeah, terribleness? I, yeah, no, that's fair. It's he's his early start is just so weak on this. All right, so we'll put him in C for now. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. Alara, where do we put him? He's in a weird spot where, on one hand, your early game is quite good and has crowd control in it because Alarak's knockback is, in fact, a bit of a stun. Unfortunately, structure overcharge <laughs> will just shoot at something that's immune to you, <laughs> and it will not retarget onto enemies you can actually damage. If you do go for Ascendance, it would be really unfortunate if you spend all your energy mind-blasting unit only to realize, oh, that it's... unit's not dying. Oopsie. <laughs> or, or it died uh, the first time, but you, you didn't realize you were in the second life. Yes. Um, if you use Wrath Walkers, though, that probably goes away. So, basically, Alarak gets annoyed by Polarity, but he just sits there being really annoyed by it. Uh, he doesn't actually get troubled that much because he has the crowd control and he has so much early game power. So I would say he's probably looking at an A tier. A? Hmm. How about you, Terribleness? No, I agree with that, particularly when you start taking his procedures into account. Because even if it's P3 or uh, P2, they're they're both quite good for Chain of Ascension, and they're also just quite good for this mutator combo in that they uh, allow you to apply constant pressure with units that they're not 
P3 is not exactly the best at tanking, but the mothership does tank to a very good degree and help keep things controlled. I actually have a bit of a doubt on that, especially when you hit like tw the 20 minute mark and uh, the, the, the waves start splitting off in different directions. I'm not sure Alarak will have an A, an A tier type of time on that. I think I actually think it's B tier, but both of you oh, agree on A? Both of you said A, so I'll leave for Arcturus, where do we have him? His units are terrible, but he does have his uh, ESOs to make up for everything. Getting those Earth Splitter Ordinances online lets you take out everything from range, and then all that's left is stuff for your ally. Um, he has a ton of crowd control. No, he still needs to push in, but it's like he has the tools to do it, particularly if he's using P1. So it's okay. like I'd be comfortable calling him... Probably either a B or an A. Okay. Uh, Sticks better. How about you? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Manx is going to be really squishy if he gets caught waiting for his ally. But other than that, he's he's totally great. He's got ESOs. He's got nukes. And, you know, if it's a ground comp, you really can just sit there, like, ESOing everything and say, all right, go get him, ally. What is the furthest you can build your Earth Splitters that they'll still reach the last set of hybrids? You know, you're going to have to rebuild twice. You really can't get around that. Uh, so, at, at a minimum, it's you'll you'll be able to do a setup roughly, you know, where the first expansion is, and that will clear out the vast majority of the map, and then you can move up forward to to get that last one's in range because it'll be just out of range of that. I think he's B tier. A tier seems a little generous considering the struggle of. Okay, I get caught without my ally. I squishy. Um. But that's like the only dr only real drawback that's holding him back from A, I think. Yeah, no, I think B's fine. It's like he's yeah. he's high risk, high reward. That's also uh, the same reason why I have our, our Alarak in A. Because his, uh, his Wrathwalkers, yeah, they're good, but if the enemy closes in, it's going to be painful. Both of you say Alarak's yeah. A. Anyway, uh, Arty, where do you have him? Pretty solid tanking if you know how to do it. But it's gonna be a lot of relying on like proper top bar usage to be good at tanking. Otherwise, you're just going to struggle from the fact that you're very money based, and so losing losing units is very painful. Correct. On the bright side, solar bombardment Ooh. is <laughs> like nuclear annihilation. Uh, shield overcharge is assuming you have mastery in it, which you probably should for this. Uh, is 400 hit points on all your units and all your allies' units. So it basically means not only are you good at tanking with that, your ally's good at tanking with that. I would recommend P3 and mostly shield spam uh, and some Archons because Archons are also very chonky. I agree. You could probably go with like B or C. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same range of that. It's just like, he himself is not that great at this mutation, but his support tools for this mutation are fantastic. Uh, so, I, I definitely agree with that. As a commander, I'd say you can put him B, because that's, what you actually have to do with Artanis is not particularly difficult. You just gotta remember to do it. <laughs> yeah. Alright, B it is. Don't have any problems with it. I also have him B. Dhaka, where do we have him? I, I put him in A, personally. He He's not going to have great time, again, in the early game, like collecting essence early, so there's not a lot he can do there. But I really do like his army, particularly his locust armies, for um, either clearing things out with creeper hosts or just stalling using locusts to to buy yourself, buy yourself some time. It's like a lot of his power is actually going to come from his top bar, which is why I would recommend P2 in this situation for him, so that you can get those, um, basically always have one of your, your top bars out at all times. It can do a lot of work, and it can stall for a very long time. What do you say about that, uh, Stixmender? Very nice. Uh, the only catch being, um, yeah, just no essence in the early game, so no I would strongly really recommend game. P2. I would strongly recommend P2. But uh, as long as you go P2, and, you know, yeah, you have very, very chunky top bar. You can have very, very chunky units depending on how you approach it. All right, let's have the Hawk and A. Phoenix, where do I have him? With the Arbiter, you can kidnap your ally and say, you're out of position, I command you, be in position, whether you like it or not. 
But, uh, yeah, no, he's very good at acquiescing your ally and having him follow you around against his, your will, you know, against his will. But he also has his stasis, which can be useful when your ally's not particularly strong and you have to stall for time. There's nothing for you to teleport. You can still stall a bit, so he has some nice stuff there. Um, his army is, if you're not using P2, is pretty... Pretty solidly tanky, I'd, I'd say middle ground, but it's like it's nice that you have the damage reduction at least that he gets. I'd say C. It's like I would like to put him in B, but it's like that he's got nothing. If if what he has does not work, he's got no backup. Don't use P two because you're going to want as much HP in your army on this mutation as you can possibly get. And it's like P two is great for doing damage, but this mutation doesn't care that much about having like really high DPS. Hmm. Okay. So, do you both agree with C? Yeah. He could go B, but I think C makes more sense, just because, like, if you get the wrong ally, everything will be bad and painful. Yep, I can confirm with my Han and Horner ally. <laughs> neither <laughs> of us neither of us could shoot up. <laughs> it was painful. Um, okay, that's just, that's just shooting up is important. Remember to shoot up. Han and Horner, what do you yeah. have him? All right, so here's the thing about Han and Horner. If it's an air comp, you're F tier. You are, like, the worst commander for this map because you have no ability to stall whatsoever, and they're probably, like, a D if it's not an air wave. So I put them in E. <laughs> it's like that's, Solid. that's your... It's like the, the one thing you have as Han and Horner, besides your top bar going for you, uh, again, against ground wave, is that now that the um, uh, better death chance has been fixed, you can actually use your fear effect to stall for a reasonably long time with the your. Fear, uh, the fear yes. is really good. Well, How about you? All they got. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bad day to be Han Horner. You, you, uh, uh, zero out of ten would not recommend being Han and Horner here. Uh, so, in terms of actual tier, that translates into. Yeah, CD is like. Probably D. Uh, actually, also gonna, I was going with E. It's like I put them a lot worse. Uh, the yeah, way you know, oh, I miss that. Yeah, I can even see that. Honestly, I, like... I also see E. I believe all of us agree with E for Hot and Hunter. So let's go right ahead. Kyrax, where do we have him? Your buildings are pretty tanky. You can spam shield batteries, and that can do a lot. Actually, shield can batteries confirm. are good. Kyrax doesn't have to worry too much about the problems. His ally has to worry about them because he just sits there and space lasers them and it's just like, cool. Uh, your problem to actually have to deal with having units that are getting shot at. Does he have enough firepower? Could be better, could be worse. He's pretty good. The problem is polarity means that a lot of your top bar app firepower is going to be wasted on targets you can't damage anyways. So I would say he's probably B tier. All right. How about you, Terribleness? Yeah, no, I think that's fair. It's like he, he could be A tier if he could crowd control better. Because it's like he has stall, but his stall is based on building buildings. So it's not exactly a very mobile strategy. You do have zealots that have like 540 oh, vitality or something huh. crazy. But it, it's, it's not the, you know, they're still not the greatest stall tactic. So yeah, I think B's fine. All right. Unanimous. Actually happened to be as well. By the way, Karax without prestige, where would you go? Where would you rank? It doesn't really make that big a difference what prestige you're using as Karax here. Okay. I don't I wouldn't recommend P1, that's about it, just because P1's gonna be a pain to use. It's not that it doesn't work, but you, you have to push with cannons, which is always a chore. Okay. So Nova, where do we have him? Yo, we can teleport our allies' army again, just not very often unless we use P2, which, you see, the thing Why about would you P2 do that? <laughs> is that it's not P3 and it's not P1, so Why would you probably use it? not recommended, <laughs> because you have Defense Drone. Defense Drone is insanely good at tanking. It gives you tanking, it gives your ally tanking, it's very, very good. She could probably go in, like, B tier, because it's just, like, she has some pretty good things, it's just not, she's not a complete package. Hmm. Okay. How about you, Terribleness? I was thinking closer to the A tier, just because her drones do work on her allies. They do do a lot of things. And I, all right, I'm I'm approaching this assuming you're going P1 starport as 
probably you should be doing yeah. with this mutation. And yeah. it's like, you can spam those railgun turns off of your ravens, like no tomorrow, and they will hold things for so long. They're not as good as worms on Kerrigan, but they're not that far away either. And it's, it's, she's got a lot that she can do to stall. She just doesn't have actual crowd control stall that she can use, which is a little funky. But she does have a lot of, a lot of taunting options. And more importantly, yes, you can force your ally to be there for you. I was thinking B, because, uh, Kerrigan is, uh, Nova is great because of all the things you said. Defensive Jordan great, but my, all, my, my entire line of thinking is, even that eventually runs out, and if Nova loses an army, it's basically game. She she has one shot at this. Basically, it's very hard to rebuild as Nova. <laughs> also, can we just agree that the first Prestige Soldier Force is just for this particular mutation at least way better than uh, the third Prestige because the third Prestige yes. relies a lot on top bars and for well, those things. It is way better than the third Prestige. Her. her- her P1, particularly Starport P1, is substantially more powerful, particularly against mutators in most situations, just in general. It's it's only when like you, you don't care about assault mood essentially that it P3 can suddenly you know take center stage there. But it's like there's night. so <laughs> very few times that that happens actually. Dead of night. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like you gotta be doing the cheese to make P3 be like fantastic Rainer what do we have him and Hyperion does have point defense drones and point defense drones can be amazing <laughs> it's like so it's like I think he, he could be a C but I I, I feel D I, I, I do think a D is probably closer especially if you factor in the fact that yes he, he is a macro a very heavy macro commander and He's got some very tight timings in that early first push on Chain of Ascension that can be uh, a very big problem for him if you if you mess up. How about you, Sixpender? Yeah, you're you're gonna have problems if you're playing as Jimmy. Uh, point defense drone is like your one saving grace, and it's not that accessible. Like compared just to Nova, right? Um, so. Yeah, what were you saying, D? Yeah, I think D's fine for him. Yeah, D, E. You guys made me feel terrible. You guys made me feel awful right now. <laughs> Jimmy, it's, I guess, I guess it's not fair in the first place. Lila made him look like, oh. Yeah. That's, that's because Lila on G. Lila is Lila. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, he was complaining about Tyke's damage output. <laughs> It's, and I do feel it's important to mention Rainer procedures here. P1 is terrible. It's not going to buy you any time whatsoever. Don't do it. You're just making yourself worse for this. Um, yeah. I'm not sure, would, but I I'm going to have to check what you. <laughs> I'm going to have to I check would, what Lila used. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I would do P2 personally on this one because that just lets you uh, you know, drop down the siege tanks and stuff, your Vikings, and you can try to uh, use a stim pack to kill an engagement from long range so that you don't have to fight it that long and buy time. P3, I think, is just too slow starting out with anything Agreed. good. All right, let's 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 forget about where I initially had Raider. Let's agree with you guys and put Raider in D. <laughs> <laughs> I do go on, though. Where did you put him? I, I, I'd like to know where you put Raider. Stepway, where do we have him? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, no. You you vastly overrated Raider, I see. <laughs> Stanley, where do we have him? <laughs> oh, boy. I was playing with Lila! You have to forgive me for this. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I had him like I had him like C or something. I had I had Raider in C. I was just, I was just pointing out how good Lila is. He made yeah. he made Raider look like B. But like yeah. Anyway, Stanley, where do we have him? Stepman. So remember tanking? He's good at that. He can't abduct his ally, but he can make his ally fast. Yeah. So if your ally's actually coming, they'll be here nice and quick. Because Stepman, you just put Zerglings in green zone and you don't lose very much. 
Uh, you just sit there and tank, and nothing bad happens to you. And if you use infestors, it just gets more and more out of control. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, I do not, I do not doubt Stepman's ability to just sit there and tank for all eternity and have no life problems with that. I agree. Super agree. Uh, <laughs> super agree, like Super Gary. Super duper agree. <laughs> Anyways, with that, Stetman is probably an A tier commander here. Why not S? I, ha I had that point S. I, ha I had him as S, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Why not S? I mean, there are limits to his tanking, but fair enough. I suppose he can probably go in S, yeah. I I'm looking at the rest of the commanders. Who else would be an S if not Stat Boy? Zeratul? Yeah. It's. It's there's a couple comps that exist that Zerglings aren't the greatest to um, tank with essentially because uh, it, it, it yeah it's like but most of those can either can be tanked with infestors or they can be tanked with either uh, your BCLs which actually can tank a substantially long time for aim on the work through or ultralists mostly because ultralists can stun. And if you just space out their charges, you can perma stun a mom with very few ultralists on those all mech comps. It's like he's just got so many options to hold things down. And yeah, he makes his ally tankier and faster. He's got all the the support tools to play together against polarity. It's polarity. I think is just like one of Stepman's best mutations. Well, <laughs> oh. I have another a different issue with polarity that I'll not get into. But do <laughs> do we agree with S? Yeah. S? Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I put him up there. He's he's got everything you need. I actually had. St I plan to use that boy on the Monday video, the one where I go into solo queue. You wish me luck, guys. Please. Yes, indeed. As long as long as there's not some mutator punishing you for tanking. Then it's like Setman can just do whatever he wants. It's it's all it's all on your ally to actually do something at some point before Jar gets pushed into the pit. Every it's week like, on it's, Monday, every week on Monday, the hardest mutator, my hardest mutator is always the ally. Every yes, week on it's, Monday, it, it's he's going to be one of the ones that buy you the most time. Yeah. That's that's he was who I was thinking of for like okay, this is a guy who has a plan when his ally is just awful. And his plan is, I can just hold them there forever, as long as you make a unit, we'll eventually get through this. But yeah, the thing with polarity is, <laughs> even with the strongest commander, like Stepboy or maybe Zeratul, it's still no guarantee, no matter how good you are, because at the end of the day, you still have to wait on your ally to kind of get there. And that's... And uh, their job. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> anyway, Stukov, why do we have him? Ah. Uh. I had actually also put Stukov to S if it's P3, only because he actually has the timings on Chain of Ascension to use his top bar to stop both the, the massive wave that comes as well as deal with the hybrids. He actually works out very nicely for him. And then, yes, yeah, Stukov is another guy who can tank forever, assuming you're using P3. You don't have to think about anything. You put your, your marker down. And, yeah, you just let your guys run. And when your ally can get there and kill things, that's when they can get there and kill things. Sticks better. How about you? Yeah. Look, just you you do not have to worry about your units dying because they are infested troopers. They do not care. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm, also, I'm slightly concerned about the early game for Stukov. Hmm. He, he oh, takes it time to build up. Early he takes time to like... build up, but the thing is, is once you get past that first big wave, you know, the second wave that spawns, you've got a lot of time before you actually need a substantial force, and that's generally more than enough for Stukov to do. Mm -hmm. And he has the timing to get out to Apocalypse with Mastery and a, uh, you know, an Alexander. I guess. So he's got one. he's got one for every bit of that. So, of course, if you miss that, yeah, you're probably screwed. <laughs> like yeah. you need those, you need those call downs for those waves. But like, yeah. them. Hmm, do both of you agree it, with S? Yeah, you can get those top bar out nice and consistently. You should be fine. All right, sure. I had I had two call of an A, but since both of you say S, I'll be for. Um, Tychus, where do you have him? I'd say probably A. I, I think so. It's like, he's the thing about Tychus is yeah, it's like I don't. 
recommend P2 necessarily. It's normally actually pretty good for this map, but you're you're going to want as much tanking and stalling as you can possibly get. You have amazing mobility with uh, Tychus, which will keep you. It will help you if you are out of position, not your ally. Like you can just teleport to your ally and save their lives. And it's like, otherwise, like, yeah, he doesn't struggle to deal damage. He's not going to struggle to tank polarity that much. He's got a lot of healing for both himself and his ally. It's like, he's got crowd control. He's got effects that ignore, ignore polarity, such as mind control. Like, he's got all the tools for it. But, yeah, he's not, he's not quite there. He can't stall infinitely. So I put him in A. All right, solid. How about you, Sixpender? Yeah. For, uh, similar, similar everything. Nice, nice. I yeah. like it. Agreeing is nice. There we go. Agreeing is nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. We did it. We agreed on something. Imagine. What's our what's uh, what's our ranking this one? You have a laser drill. It slows. This is good. Yes. This is crowd control. Yes. This is something that will keep attacking for you without you needing to like be there. So. Swan is great to have as an ally who you have absolutely no confidence in his competence because don't worry, Swan will pick up the slack for the incompetent player behind the Swan. Probably a pretty decent decent tier. The question is how decent. I was thinking B tier. Like I don't think he can make it to A, but like he can't make it to A because he's like what hey, he what's our else? religion, guys? What's our religion? We're born <laughs> again. <laughs> We're born again. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like Swan gets overwhelmed if he's got to tank too much, you know. Like if the allies like not being able to do much of anything, and it's like, okay, you don't have problems killing your stuff because you're Swan, and you don't have to think about it that much. You got to drill to do it for you, but it, you you're not going to be able to stall for that long with Swan with everything. Or I should say, on the later waves, early waves, he's got no problem stalling at all. So it's like, that's why I was thinking B, because he can't quite do that last bit where he's just like, oh, I can I can buy a minute for my ally to catch back up or anything. Without but, Prestige, yeah. what happens to Swan? Without Prestige, I put him in C. Mm, still solid. C is not terrible. Okay, so we'll have Swan in B. Alright, uh, Vorazun, where do we have him? I would put Porzun in A. She's the CC commander. She's perfect for for dealing with this mutation when your ally is useless. It's like it's like she's not the easiest to play. I'd say I'd say of the A tier commander, she's probably the hardest one to play because she, she does require uh, quite a bit of micromanagement and a lot of you know skill and macro timings to her. But she has black hole, which is perfect for this. She has time stop, which is perfect for this. You can set everything up for your ally. You can even teleport your ally to locations for you with a small bit of micro using your, uh, your, your, uh, Dark Pylon. Your, what's it called? Dark Pylons, yeah. Yeah, A tier makes sense. P3 is definitely going to be better than like, anything else. Even even if you might think, oh, but crowd control, I want P2. No. Just, Why would anyone use P2 on this? What kind of idiot would use P2 on this? You see, the problem with P2, <laughs> the problem with P2 Vorazun is that it's P2 Vorazun. Uh, it's like, the best form of trial control is killing your enemy, so taking anything that reduces your damage output is generally not that great. Yes. So you're saying that if you just switched to Vorazun P3, that would have been the same as when you played as Karrion, so you didn't even need to switch commanders. Yeah, but I decided I was just like, you know what? I honestly I as I said, I feel like Kerrigan could could stray towards S tier, so I I put Kerrigan above Borzoon. They're both in A. It's one Kerrigan's at the top end of A and Karen's Oh okay. But again, this is assuming this is assuming that yes, you're playing with an ally who who can actually do things for both of them. They they both depend on that a lot. <laughs> My issue with Borzoon is Getting to the spot where you can actually, I don't know, fight air at like seven minutes. The big air yeah, wave at seven yeah. minutes. If you roll air. I'm super iffy on that. 
if you roll air, it's generally just like a real bad luck draw where it's like, yeah, you're going battle cruisers or carriers coming early on. It's like, all right, that's a big pain. Yeah. It's like, you got to make void rays that, or that's really your only option for something that early. And it's, Mm. that's like, okay, you might, you might want to just give up on this and re-roll. That's like, there's three comps, I think that are, that will actually do that. Yeah, in total, for the most, part, most of the air comps are manageable, realistically. Yeah. It's so. it, it. There's only like three that are just like, wow, I hate my life as four zoom unless my ally can carry me, and it's the rest of them are all like, yeah, she can deal with it, and then she's fantastic from there on. So, I think A's fine. All right, both of you guys say A, so let's put Warzoom in A. Just this for Warzoom. There we go. All we needed was two to not be here. <laughs> just to have Warzoom in A. Okay, uh, Zagara, what do we have with Stixbender? Your army's cheap, and it's not the end of the world if it dies. That is your list of positive traits here. Does she have some things? Well, yes. But is it good? No. Not really. Um, It's basically just her big, tra- her big upside is, at least when my stuff dies a horrific death, I I expected that. That was that was supposed that was always going to happen. I'm a Zagara. Everything dies. Nah, I think she can I think she can make D tier just on the sheer basis of see Jimmy and Jimmy's in D, right? Yeah, yeah, no, Jim's in D. I was, no, just, I, was, I was thinking. I was thinking she could go C. I was thinking oh, okay. she could go C also, just because she's so uh, easy to use. She is really easy to no, use. No, less because she's easy to use and more just because like um, if Jimmy loses everything, that really sucks. If Zagara yeah, loses everything, that there's sucks. more. But wait, well, there's that's, more. <laughs> that is that is very true. It's like Zagara can replenish with no issue, and that is a strong point on this one. <laughs> when you're expecting to die a lot, so yes, because you will die a lot if your ally is not doing their job, and so Zagara just being like, "Okay, I died." Oh no. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, okay. I I I go with C. It's like I don't have strong feelings on Zagara. Okay. Cool. Um, Zeratul, what do we have as the expender? You've got good tanking with Dark Archon Legion being able to mind control stuff and stun stuff. You have Avatar of Essence, which has this really nice trait of when it does Devolution Wave, it rerolls the polarity on everything. So that's nice because uh, that means that if your ally's not there, you can you just re-roll them. <laughs> Until they can actually solo everything. <laughs> yes, uh, you can kill a considerably larger proportion than 50% with that. Well, no, wait. Sorry, normally you can. With just die polarity, however, everything needs your ally. So actually, it doesn't help you at all. Uh, so, well, so. Uh, it does help because it, it, it gets demoted to a lower tier. Exactly. If you are against the right comp, you're going to just be like, a oh, oh, giant attack wave of Zerglings. Anyways, you're drones now. And once they're drones, they're as good as dead. They might as well be dead. It doesn't. They don't do anything. And then you always have the one nice thing of Zeratul is quite good at sniping detection. Even if the units have polarity on them, the detection units, you can still type all the detection structures. And then just run around like, okay, well, my ally's not here, but Amon can't see me. So well, he can because he can only he can only snipe half of its life. You killed your half of the observer. How about well, your ally's half? No, no, no. You kill all the you kill all the buildings, and then the unit detectors are. The, you'd be surprised how many areas aren't covered by detection once you get rid of all the buildings. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. Like a lot of chain ascension is building detection, and if it is an observer or something like that, if you use an immortal to kill it, yeah, it kills the first half, but also catapults it, you know, ten miles away. So you got time to to do stuff. More than enough time, especially if you're using like a Dark Templar army with Zeratul, because like you'll be in and out in three seconds. All right, so and your Dark Templar you... have approximately a billion hit points, anyways. So you know. So where do you have yeah. him? Uh, he's probably another A tier. Why not S? Yep. All those things I heard. Uh, why not S? He he would be S, I think, if it wasn't just die in polarity, because then he could actually just solo this. <laughs> Well, a lot of these commanders can solve this if it were for just high polarity. Let's be fair. Well, it's like I, I'm saying 
with polarity, Zeratul is one of the few commanders that can actually solo polarity mutations if things line up correctly, you know, as far as objective timings go. And it's yeah. like, it, it it's because of his essence or working on it, you know, working on to demote things. Because he can tank long enough to drop his uh, avatar of essence and then demote everything and eventually clear out the vast majority of it. And what's left over is normally drones that you can't kill. But like you know, aren't doing anything, and it's like that—that's fine for him. So it's like he—he's got ways to solo versus polarity, but not against just die and polarity. Yeah, once just die shows up, it's just like, well, now I can't really solo anymore because, unfortunately, uh, you run into the problem of, oh, I can't kill them even once, and that—that—that's so. unfortunate. It's unfortunate. That is that is what that is. It is unfortunate. It's like I mean, you can, I guess you could get into, but well, the normal person's not going to do this. Zeratul does have some bugs and glitches he can do that, like make his army and his out his army completely uh, immortal. They don't take any damage, even though they can be attacked. That takes a lot of uh, skill, APM, micro bug abuse, and it only lasts, I think, once you get it down, it only lasts like 30 to 45 seconds anyway, so it's not worth Yeah, if your, allies, if your ally's not there, it won't matter, because yeah. he, can, he has to kill his half. <laughs> He's still gotta kill his half, and it's like, yeah, you can take, you can make yourself take even longer once they are told the normal, but it's like, it, it's not worth that much effort. It really isn't. So both of you guys agree on A? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alright, it's, a, there's a lot of A guys here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's so hard to justify S when polarity exists. Yeah. I think uh, Swan's the only S commander who didn't get S tier. Feels bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor man. Poor Swan. Oh. Yeah, he's a buff. Buff Swan. Like, that's what I. That's what I want. Buff Swan. I'd be. I'd be fine with moving Alaric down to B tier. I think. I don't think he's quite as good as any of the other ones up in there. Looking at the other ones, yeah, I, I agree. I think Alaric isn't quite A. And to be fair, I initially even had Alaric in C, but since both of you guys said A, I just kind of deferred. <laughs> yeah. It's like A. A tier is kind of packed, and it's like he's he's the weak link of all those up there. So. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. And so, besides, are. I would throw Alarak down at tier just for the overcharge thing. It, it is really annoying that it, it will not attack the right target, but overcharge still does. It, I how really much wish. Is it, like Can it's, someone... a, it's a lot of HP. It's a lot of HP. Can someone get uh, uh, Tangor Craft on this? Come on, Tangor Craft. We can do it. We believe in you. The whole community there's believes a, in you. There's a lot of there's a lot of emotional damage to the fact that it doesn't work properly. <laughs> yes, and you it can does. argue you can argue that emotional damage is the real damage of all this. <laughs> all this the worst the worst damage of all emotional damage. All right, mm -hmm. so who's better, uh, Stepboy or Stukov? Probably, well, Stepman's stronger, but Stukov is way easier to use. So I, I guess that's up. what. And that's how you can look at it. It's like Stepman is going to do way more, but Stukov is very simplistic. Even against air comps, Stukov has a very simplistic answer, which is you spam a bunch of liberators. It's like, <laughs> it's like you you spam your infested and you make a bunch of liberators, and that's all you, you need. It's that he he doesn't have any struggle of what to do. Okay, so Stukov top of S. Yeah, I th he's the easiest one to use, and I think that's probably the more relevant yeah. thing. You don't need power. Setman's got power. He could speed run this probably a lot better than Sukov can, but like, do you want to speed run this, or do you just want to beat it? Okay. I'm uh, I'm not opposed to that. They are both S's after all. Anyway, for A, yeah. who's the best among the A? Uh, for A... Uh... I put Zeratul. Uh, well, I was wondering why Zeratul is an S. Yeah, I, I think Zeratul's the top of A. The only one that can compete with him, I think, would be the Haka. Uh, Kerrigan, I guess, would be a close third, but, like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we can move we can move Zeratul right up to the top of that. No problem there. And then we have the Haka and Kerrigan next? Uh, yeah. I would put... Ooh. 
Tychus, though, yeah. No, Tychus is below Haka. I wouldn't. Oh, no, oh, no, no, not, not above the Haka. I was thinking Tychus maybe above Kerrigan, because he's going to be a lot easier to use than Kerrigan. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I would, I would say Kerrigan is higher than Tychus. I would say. But she's also... she's more powerful than Tychus for sure. I was just thinking Tychus yeah. is very well. He's a Mova hero. He's very easy to use. But well, depending on what prestige you use. Yeah, it, I guess it, it depends on your gaming background how easy you see Tychus to be. <laughs> yes. And, uh... Indeed. Although I do agree that Tychus is very good, like it, 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 there's no knock on being in the bottom of A. It's still A. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know who I put though for Tychus versus Florizoon. I, I I don't think I really care either way. I think they're both pretty solid there. How about you, Expender? Uh. Yeah. I think we can keep Tychus above Florizoon, to be honest. So it's keep just... it alphabetical. Yeah, there we go. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, keep, you need to remember, Tychus has a lot of CC as well. Like Vorazun, we talked about CC. We can't underestimate the sheer quantity of CC that Tychus offers as well. It's a yeah. lot. I remember he's got he's got the tank and he's got the tanking. He's got both, and it's like that's nice. He doesn't have force teleport on his ally, but he's got he's got a lot of tools for this. I remember yeah. in my game with Lila, I I went serious. I even went Vega. Like we are we were we were disruptors, so I just might control the reverse. Like, ha ha, <laughs> like uh, it, I actually had technically more. Uh, wait, no, no. Yeah, I technically had more kills than Lila when uh, when I ran Tychus, just because the units that I might controlled were on their first life, so Lila doesn't get his half of the kills <laughs> because I stole them. <laughs> anyway, um, I kind of agree with uh, Tychus being above Vorazun. Um, because yeah, I still I'm still really iffy on Vorazun A, but I think she can I think she can live there safely. All right, she's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Everything. The, the way I'm thinking of this is I'm thinking Manx is the top of B to to skip forward a bit, and I don't think I'd necessarily put Manx above Vorazun. I think Vorazun is doing a lot of the same stuff Manx does, but she's got a much easier time actually doing it than Manx does. Manx does have a lot better answers to air, but that that's really it. Didn't Alak get the motive from A? So are we already saying that uh Alak Oh yeah, Alarak. Really uh, right, we yeah. I, mm, yeah. It's 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 really do you like cutting with Rathwalkers and Alarak better than ESO spam? I just think ESO spam is so easy on this, even if you have to set up twice. Yeah, it's basically that, like, it's basically a competition between those two. I would probably put Elorak slightly ahead, but I, honestly, you yeah. could put either. You could put either on top. They're they're mm -hmm. both going to be excellent, you know, for for I doing might, their strategies. I might put Elorak does first... have a hero unit actually, so that I think that's a big deal. Hero unit for that first part of the game is a really big deal. I might yeah. put I, honestly, I might put Arturus above Elorak just for that overcharge thing. I still can't get over it, to be honest. <laughs> As I said, all the emotional damage. Yes. So much emotional damage. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd be okay with either of them being at the top. I think both of them can do it. I, I can, like Alaric, I'm fine with Alaric's it as it is. stronger early. Yeah. If it's Alaric's not, got a lot of early power, which is probably more important. If the difference isn't that big, I can call it a tie and just leave it right there. Um, so between Artanis and Karax, who's next? I think hmm. Artanis could be even lower than where he is, like even lower than Nova, I think. Yeah, yeah, Tannis could go down a fair ways. Yeah. Lower than Swan? I think he's above Swan, but that's probably where I'd stop him. Okay. Yeah. So, Karak's or Nova? That's... I prefer. Yeah, that's, that's a question. <laughs> I think I prefer Karax here, just because. Yeah. I do too. Yeah, he, he, Karax yeah. is good. If you, if you even use no prestige or the, the second prestige, you can corner your ally, you have repair beam, you have... Um, I'd rather have a Karax ally, but I'd rather be playing Nova, which is probably the weird one for me. So it's like, I'll, the, I'll default. I play a lot of Nova. It's like, I, I know how to abuse her abilities to make my ally do things for me. <laughs> So. Yes, I'd rather I just I'd just straight up rather be playing as Karax or having Karax ally. Just I want Karax here. I like Karax. Yeah. I like your I like your phrasing on the terribleness. You you said yeah. I know how to abuse 
her abilities. I like how you stop at between abuse and her, not her and ability. I like I like your phrasing right there. Continue. Yeah, but yeah, no, that's 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 why I feel like I like playing Nova a lot, and it's like I know how to use her quite well. So it's like I ha- I'm very comfortable playing her. I think that's going to bleed into my evaluation of her versus Carax. But I think, uh, I think it's a good it could it, it could be a virtual tie between them. Honestly, they're just different. Yeah, yeah. different. I mean, ways, I, I think but... it's it's fine to leave them where they are because Carax is. Carax is the one, like, if you are you get to the title screen and you see a Carax ally, you're being be like, ah, that's alright. Yeah, pretty much. We'll, we'll be fine. We have a Carax. Okay, C. Who's the best among the C? <sighs> Abathur. I think that's actually probably the order of C. It's probably Abathur, Phoenix, Zagara. Alright. Um, it's like, yeah. Phoenix could go get both Avatar, I guess, but I don't know. If, if, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm thinking. I, I disagree with the current order. I agree with the current order. All right, there it, it is. It, Phoenix Phoenix has more early power than Avatar does, but Avatar's got a lot more mid to late game power once he gets biomass. So it's like that's that's what it comes down to. What what's your struggle doing this mutator? Is is it the early game part of it, or is it everything else afterwards when the waves ramp up? All right, and guys. It, so. Uh... Here's basically the tier list that is done. So how you should interpret this is if you have to play on the solo queue, if you absolutely must play on the solo queue, you can either only use Death Boy or or, or Stukov and pray that you get a decent ally. If you're with someone who you can carry, um, you can go with any of the S guys or the A guys. If you're in a party, you can go down as low as B. If you have someone who you know can carry, you can go down as low as C. If you're Lila, you can go down as low as D, but only if you're Lila. Hmm. And only if you're 2 2, you can you go down as low as E, but only if you're 2 2. There it is, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, have solved, we have solved it all. We understand all, right. all the secrets of this universe now. Hope you enjoy that. Hot Order is first place if you turn the list upside down. <laughs> That's true. And if we're right going by. <laughs> you, you take anyone you can get in the Dominion. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have an idea of what else, please leave that in a comment. I will see you guys next time.